Hi, everyone. It is Friday, October 27th. Welcome to episode, but you already knew that. Welcome to episode 111 of the All Dolphins podcast, where today, in honor of number 11, Dolphins are playing the Patriots in two days. Has to be Devontae Parker, does it not? Oh, no. come on. Are we really going to give Devontae Parker? No, it's not going to be Devontae Parker. I am going to go Jim Crash Jensen, guy before your time, played for the Dolphins from 1981 through 1992. It was a late-round draft pick. He was a quarterback at Boston University, but with the Dolphins, played a little bit of quarterback, a little bit of running back, a little bit of wide receiver maybe, a little bit of tight end, a little bit of H-back. Crash Jensen, right? Crash Jensen. Uh, fan favorite because he was he was always going hard and because he was so versatile. So uh, what coaching I would staff get, was he part of? Sorry, that was Shula. That was okay. Shula. All right. Yeah, I would get destroyed if I if I didn't go with Jim Crash Jensen. So here it is. But it was too tempting to not to mention Devontae Parker at the top because he wore number eleven and they are playing the Patriots. Though he no longer wears eleven, he wears number one now for the Patriots. Uh, are we concerned about Devontae Parker at no. all? Oh, okay. Uh, no, we are concerned if the Dolphins don't have Xavier Howard and if the Dolphins don't have Jalen Ramsey. And the answer to those two questions per the final injury report of week eight, we don't know. Yeah. We think we know, but we don't know. And watch Jalen Ramsey closely all day today. Um, I can't give you a definitive answer. I went into the week saying, oh, he's absolutely playing. Um, I, I just thought you don't come this far, push this hard to not be playing on your birthday weekend at home before you go to Germany for a game that the whole nation will be watching, even though it's 9 a.m. in the morning. Um, I bet but, against Kansas City. Yes. But what, what I've what – I've, Product placement here. See, product placement. Look at that. My wife got oh, the me. Dolphin, do, there you go. Very nice. Um, what, what does concern me is, and I'm no doctor. I only stayed at a Holiday Inn. However, I watch professional athletes for 15 years. You've doubled me. And when I look at Jalen Ramsey's movement and position drills, I'm going to be honest with you. And this is only because it's a good it's time to start, Omar. It's a good time to start yeah. being honest. Go ahead. It looks like an injured player coming back from an injury. I, I don't want to I want to I don't want to shock you. But it looks like an injured player coming back from an injury. And Mike McDaniel said something that that was very key and telling. And we both know how Mike McDaniels is about injured players. And I think it was. Either it was you or Chris Perkins who said something to me that was, see, look at you. Family's gone. You're drinking on the job. What's going on here? Like, I'm, I'm, hitting, I'm hitting the Celsius. I'm, I'm, I'm hardcore. I, I don't believe you that that Celsius. It was brown. I didn't even know you were a brown drinker. Oh. Product, product placement. <laughs> Celsius writes some big checks, too. I'm telling you. There you go. Uh, um, we know Mike McDaniel is very cautious, and I can't remember if it was you or or, or Chris Perkins um, who said this team learned from how they were on fumes at the end of last season and basically had to start all those fill-in players because of injuries. <laughs> and Mike McDaniel has been very adamant about making sure that his team is healthy for the second half of the season, and not just second half of the season, but for February. And they used the word February, and it only took me. I haven't month. heard it. I haven't heard it, but you mentioned it several times. So go ahead. Yeah, it, it's only taken me a month to figure out. There's only one game that's played in February, um, and he's aired on the cautious side. Like to me, Javon Holland, who's coming back from a concussion, I don't know. I don't. I know he's probably going to be cleared by Saturday, but I think that the Dolphins are probably going to wait a week and make a go of it with Brandon Jones and. Uh, Deshaun Elliott and see where they are um, in terms of these cornerbacks, man, I can't call it. I really can't call it. Um, I think Xavier will be back from the groin injury, maybe on a limited basis. And maybe we see Jalen Ramsey in a limited role. Maybe, maybe we see him like as a nickel cornerback um, or, or in the nickel packages, just so that he can 
get adjusted, can treat it like preseason. But Mike McDaniel said something today. This team expects Jalen Ramsey to play like Jalen Ramsey. Correct. To be the elite player that he is. Okay, but you're, you're we're jumping ahead here. Let's 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 establish a couple of things first before we continue our conversation. Xavier Howard listed as questionable. Jalen Ramsey listed, listed as questionable. Javon Holland did not have the red. He was at practice again. Listed as questionable, but did not have the red no contact jersey, which obviously is a sign. Is a positive step. Step. Yeah. The other thing also with Jalen Ramsey, we need to mention because we haven't done a show since it happened. But the Adam Schefter tweeted out last night that per sources, Jalen Ramsey is playing against the Patriots. To which Jalen Ramsey said, Whoa, time out, time out. Uh, really? That's news to me. Um, and again, part of it possibly could be that Jalen Ramsey wants to be the one to make that announcement at the time when it needs to be made. Part of it. Yeah, you know, a slight possibility because kind of that's kind of how athletes roll in 2023. Part of it also maybe that legitimately he's not 100 percent sure. And I'm with you. I had my eyes on him at practice today, and like you, I'm not a doctor. Like you, I did stay at a Holiday Express, and I looked at him. Yeah, and I it didn't look like a guy who was like like 100 percent, no question about it. I mean, that guy's playing. Whereas yeah. er, whereas the week began, I was like thinking, yeah, looking pretty good. So I and mentioned the end on, under this whole, whole whole idea of erring on the side of caution. I would be surprised if Javon Holland played, even if he got cleared again, because the last the last thing you want is a concussion back to back games. Absolutely. And then with Ramsey, I probably I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe 50 50. I'm with you. I'm 50 50. I don't know. And Mike McDaniel says it's really how. He feels in recovery the next day. He feels in warm-up. One thing that I did find interesting about the Ramsey practice return is unlike some of these guys who are returning from knee injuries who went, remember, every other day, Ramsey's going every day. Now, I know he's limited every day, but you would think that maybe the first week you say, okay, go every other day. Then the next week we go every day limited. Then the next week after that we go maybe every other day full or, and then, you know, we see where the, the, the buys next week. I don't know. And I think when you heard Mike McDaniel talk today, you basically heard a man who said, I don't know. And it's both him and X and they're going to, he's going to trust them to make sure that they're thinking big picture. And they're also thinking, I'm not going to suffer a setback. I think that Mike McDaniel, we were talking about this in the media room. I think that he learned from the Connor Williams experience because remember when he said he felt like he needed like personal security for basically against Connor. He was yeah, joking. He was joking. I mean, it's like, but, but I understand the point, but he, I mean, he, yeah, but Connor Williams admittedly admitted and acknowledged. He kind of forced his way onto the field and was, too soon, suffered a setback, admitted to that because he tried to do too much too soon. And the last, and you know, you got to protect athletes from themselves. That's right. just something that. But when that, here's the thing though, when that conversation happens and I'm sure McDaniel had a heart to heart with Connor Williams before that Giants game and looks him in the eye and says, Connor, you need to be straight with me. Cause I, I, I think I, I'm not, again, I'm not a doctor, but I think with a groin strength, they're pretty much going to go with what the player is telling them. And if Mike McDaniel is looking Connor Williams in the eye and, McD and Connor Williams wants to play so bad that he's not completely straight with McDaniel, that's, this is on, that's on Williams. If, if Williams tells McDaniel, it's not a hundred percent, but I can gut it out. Let me play out there. And this, this is where would be the lesson that McDaniel would have learned. Like it, it, I, I can't have a player telling me it's not perfect, but I can gut it out. I need a yeah. player to tell me, I'm back. I'm mm -hmm. fully back. Uh, it, I think Con Connor, Mike McDaniel says Connor Williams will play since we're addressing that. What yes. he didn't say is that Connor Williams will start. Now, I found that a little odd. I'm pretty sure I'm not alone. I think you found that a little odd. Maybe this is a situation where you want to try to give him another week's worth of rest. 
and you want to have him there as a backup or available, but not necessarily play him unless you absolutely need him because you need a backup center. But then if you're going to go through those lengths, why not just play him? Even though the rest would benefit him, wouldn't it? Would it not? No, correct. And uh, that, yeah, and I was, I made that point in the media, in the media room. It's like if it, if this were a playoff game, yeah, I absolutely get it. I completely get that you play him, or, or you, he dress he dresses even if he's not one hundred percent, in case Liam either gets hurt or is a complete flop, and then at least you have something over there. But this is week eight, so to me, it's like well, Connor Williams is ready to play, or he's not. So I, I was surprised. Well, by that. Kind of, what I what I found interesting was, um, and, and these are sort of the dynamics and things that go on in the locker room. Um, we come into the locker room after practice, so guys are showering, doing their thing, you know, getting your cold tub, hot tub, eating, you know, listen to music, doing whatever. Um, locker room's a great environment. One of my favorite. I, I missed it so much when I when I was not covering the league. Um just because of the great conversations that you have in the locker room. But Connor Williams comes out of the bathroom area, sees the media there, and instantly about faces and dips. And I understand because the last thing he wants to do is give you an update on his injury, if he's playing, if he's not playing. Um, you know, have, have you know, I understand there's certain times when we're not very popular um, and certain guys that we're not very popular too. So I'm not saying where we are with Connor because I have no idea. I I just I just got here. So I, I, I approached him a couple of times last year. He's fine. Um, here's I, a for, the, for the record, you know I think Connor's a phenomenal player and oh, I know. should be should be should have been priority number one of players to resign. In my opinion, said that back in March, and and he's even better than I I, I remembered. So, but look. That's I want. I just want that on wax. Yeah, but it, it, no. The point I was going to make is in a one-time deal, and this is something I don't know if Connor doesn't want. That technically, he's on the roster and he practiced, so he was fair game for the media to, to approach him. And this is this is something that's weird to me in, in a dynamic with the player in the media in 2023. He could have just come into the locker room, go to his to his dressing area, and we approach him, and he goes. Guys, I don't want to talk today. And we all, we all, we all would have respected it. My the issue. Hurt. Sorry, you feel. Like hurt. And, and yet, I get the feeling you'd, you'd overcome that eventually. Um, <laughs> uh, as long as it's not, as long as it's not a pattern of somebody completely, re all, constantly refusing to talk to the media. Had you, would you, would you have had a major issue with that? Had you done that? I listen. You know, there are guys that I don't talk to. If a guy is struggling, I'm not. I'm not that reporter where I'm like. I'm in your face. Why are you struggling? Why do you suck? What are you doing? Why aren't you playing? What? I'm not that guy. Um, everybody thinks I am, but I'm not. Um, you know, I, I haven't had a conversation with Liam Eikenberg. I, I don't want to jinx him, so I'm just leave him alone. Um, and Liam's playing all right. Um, I wouldn't have. It wouldn't have bothered me, but it's just easier to just avoid us and go back to do yeah. what you were you were gonna do. I'm not worried about that. If he's active, if he plays, I think your offensive line is better with Connor Williams. And certainly when you're replacing the left guard, you, you kind of, you, you know, I think when you're replacing the left guard, it would help to have Connor Williams out there. Do you absolutely, without a doubt, unequivocally necessarily have to have him to beat the New England Patriots? I don't think so. Oh, no, I agree. Uh, and since we mentioned Liam Eikenberg, interesting comment from Mike McDaniel today before practice where he kind of basically saying, no, Liam's good at center. That's where he's going to stay for now. Uh, and Lester Cotton kind of suggested he's going to get the shot against the Patriots. And Robert Jones is a quote-unquote ascending player who we're going to have to find a way to get in the lineup at some point. Yeah. Well, I don't, well, I don't know where Robert Jones is playing if it's not right left guard. So so uh, message Lester Cotton, play no, better no. than Eagles. I talked to Lester Cotton earlier this week, um, and I intended to do something about it, write something on him. Why didn't and you? I, Go ahead. So I, <laughs> hi, boss man. Um, because because anytime I propose stories about offensive linemen, you poo-poo it. That's why. Anyway, um, and and it seemed like this is a young man who's realized 
he's had some struggles throughout his career, um, had some struggles with maturity throughout his career, and feels like he's turning a corner, and was disappointed in his performance against the Philadelphia Eagles, which, yo, <laughs> everybody going to struggle against the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> well said, but the he <laughs> yeah, well said. <laughs> like, like, bro, <laughs> those are big boys. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead and come in, come in in the middle of the first quarter yeah. against the Eagles. Have fun. Yeah, and no practice. There, listen, Lester. There is no shame in struggling against the Eagles, but I think he's looking forward to the opportunity to redeem himself and prove who he is as an NFL player. Um, and and it seems like the Miami Dolphins are going to give him that opportunity. This is a former Alabama prospect, and in, interestingly enough. Just doing some background check for the story that I plan to write with alldolphins.com, which I, I just haven't gotten around to. Hey, man, Jalen Ramsey popped off on Adam Schefter last night. I, what were you supposed to do? Tyreek Tyreek popped off on, on, on it needed to be said. What was I supposed to do? Right, Lester Cotton? I know what the people want. Very, very well said. Very well put. Um, and we have those stories up on alldolphins.com. So you, you, you can find them clicking alldolphins.com. As you can see right there, where you can find the work for free. Look um, at you, the control board, excellent. Ain't my first rodeo, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, but how, I am, I'm curious. Now, does the fact that the whole left side of the offensive line is filled with potentially replacements against the Patriots scare me? Yes. Does the fact that Bill Belichick knows it's going to be nothing but replacements and probably will attack it, does that concern me? Yes. But. I'm curious to see what happens. Curiosity. Um, and well, then, go ahead. No, I was gonna say there's no Jalen Carter on that defensive line. Yeah, there's da- Davin Godchild, who's off the injury report. By the way, he got no game status designation. He will be in the lineup against his former team. Hopefully, Devontae Parker is too. Hopefully, yeah. Mike Gesicki is too. And They're as I say, them. every time you play Gesicki. If he blocks you successfully, I'm taking names down. I'm showing the film. You know what? I'm going to have to rewatch that game next week more than once. And then on one of my viewings, I'm going to just focus on Gesicki the entire time and see if he if he blocks or neutralizes a Dolphin. Defender. I won't allow one single block by Mike Gesicki. Not one. So Christian Barmore, by the way, is a very good You know who we didn't harass this week? We didn't harass Durham Smite. Like, oh, what's wrong? Totally with missed that bromance opportunity. I Dang. know. Um. Anyway, Durham was like looking around the locker room. Oh, nobody's wants to talk to me. Okay. Uh, Life yeah. as usual. We only talk to Durham when when Mike Gesicki comes to town. Um. <laughs> and and now we didn't even do that. Uh. Mm-hmm. But a, a, any other interesting injuries things? Yes. Um, Yes, we mentioned that Braxton Berrios was not at practice on Friday. However, it was for personal reasons. He did not get a game status designation, which means he's good to go. The Dolphins had a whole – the Dolphins injury report is all questionable, and that's Connor Williams, Xavier Howard, Jalen Ramsey. I will look at my phone here for the rest of the – No Tyreek Hill. River Craycraft. Hold on. You're jumping the gun. River Craycraft, Alec Ingold. Raheem Mostert, Nick Needham, Cam Smith. That's it. And as as Omar just spoiled, no, Tyreek Hill did not get a game status designation. He is good to go, as Mike McDaniel indicated before practice. Yeah, and again, for that? those for those who were like come or were coming at us with Chita don't get hurt, there was never an issue. Again, just because Tyreek Tyree could have three broken bones, and I'm gonna say this again. Tyreek could have three broken bones in his leg, and he would still say, Chita don't get hurt, don't I'm get gonna hurt. be fine, I'm gonna be out there. Yeah. Um, interesting that you say Tyreek because really, why is that, Omar? Was there, there something with Tyreek that you wanted to bring up? There is something that I feel like we should or need to address regarding Tyreek. Um, and what the hell might that be? It was something that he said on his podcast, it needed to be said, which airs Thursday night, and I found it very interesting. And I figured that I would bring it to the podcast in, in, in this funny fun for our format here that you know we've been working on so here we go 
Go for it. The whole thing is whenever people and, you know, naysayers online try to talk about, you know, who's the MVP of our team is, my thing is Tua is the franchise quarterback. He is our guy. He's the engine. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's the guy that makes this team go. Everybody knows that. Like, he's the guy that can make every pass on the field. And without him, we wouldn't be where, where we are. Now, me being me, I'm just the energy, baby. Like, I'm the guy that brings life. Like, I'm the guy that gets guys up. Like, I'm I'm the hype man, basically. You feel me? Right. Like, right. he, like, like, he the artist and I'm the hype man. I'm just here to support him. Like, right. you feel me? So, without Tua, like, None of none of this will be possible. Um, I I still be you know crushing it a little bit, but I probably wouldn't I probably wouldn't have the same numbers that I would have this season. You know what I'm saying? Without QB one back there, you feel me? So two right. is definitely I feel like the MVP of the league right now. So I'm bringing this to your attention, Mister Poupard, um, from the standpoint. Talking, talking that you would want me to comment on this. Go ahead. From the standpoint of. We continue to have these back and forth debates and discussions. Um, as I as I was talking to in the media room, it, it pretty much became like a civil war last week when we were just continuously debating who's more responsible for the offense. Would the offense work with this player? Would the offense work without that player? Oh, you know, the, you know, you know the conversations that 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 real fans have that the media is discussing, and you know. Tyreek Hill is going at Stephen A. Smith for and and I understand the argument and Chris Perkins, our, coll our colleague with Sun Sentinel, made the argument that Tyreek should be the MVP in MVP consideration. And I think if he is, does get 2000 yards, he will definitely be considered for the MVP honors. However, I will make the argument that I've heard consistently from players, including Tyreek Hill on this on his own podcast, who says, Tua is the engine that makes it all go. And your response to that is? I thought you said last week it was the offensive line that made the offense go. That's my uh, initial – that's my initial – a couple of quick points. Number one, that that's my initial my initial thought. Um, number two, Tua is a point guard. Uh, number three, if – unless Tyreek blows up – He's got very practically no – unless he sets a record and goes to 2,000 yards, he's got no shot to win MVP because wide receivers don't. Um, and as I've said many, many, many times, to me the Dolphin offense is a, is a machine with a lot of key components, the speed, the the scheme, to us, performance at quarterback. Yes, absolutely. Um the offensive line to, to a certain degree, I, I think not quite, not quite as much as you think it is, but uh, it's part of it as well. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Tyreek is in the conversation. Cause if you look at the odds for, for an NFL MVP, but right, right now, if we're going to be honest, if the season ends today, the winner is Patrick Mahomes and it's not Tua. Uh, and I say that not only because of the fact that the last six winners were the quarterback of a number one seed. And right now those two guys are Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes. And it ain't Jalen Hurts who's the MVP right now. And you could you, – this may not be a popular opinion, but Patrick Mahomes right now, if you look at what he's got around him on offense, he's got Travis Kelsey, who's by far the best tight end in the NFL. But that wide, receiver, that wide receiver core ain't great. Yeah, it's all right. Ain't great. Uh, so – so yeah, and and Tyreek's comments do not surprise me in the least because he's always been, he has always been, like, incredibly supportive and a great teammate who completely always defers. So nothing surprising over there. Uh, does that mean the debate's over because Tyreek said so? No. Uh, but when you say and when you mentioned the civil war and the conversation that was to me it got a little bit heated when some of our colleagues would decide, well, you're wrong. And to me, which is completely condescending and offensive, like I'm not saying I'm right. If I if I say that Tyreek would be MVP, it's, you 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 want to say it's Tua? I'm not telling you you're wrong. They're both valid opinions. That's all. No, 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 no. It, it, I think there is no right or wrong answer, and I think Mike McDaniel's answer in response to this: every, everybody plays an important part 
in right. what's happening and what we're seeing. And truthfully speaking, they got to continue it. This, it, it, you know, it the offense has begun to slow down a little bit. We're not seeing a lot of these as um, Kyle Shanahan called it sheet motions. Um, you're not seeing that, and I think a lot of major component is they they can't really do that on the road. And yeah, it's right, because it, of this. It, Yes, exactly. And it's a little bit scary that that this doesn't translate on the road, but it's fine. It's OK. Um, I will defend myself against your slanderous claims. I do believe that the offensive line is the main catalyst for why you're having this offensive success. I will defend myself and my argument by saying quarterback is protected. Number one rushing game in the NFL with backups on the field you you i'm sorry what dolphins franchise have you covered for the last 15 20 years that would still be having success on their eighth offensive lineman you name me the team but see to me that's a byproduct of everything else that's going on around it as much more so than it is the, the, the play of the offensive line which again has been very good but they're placed in a very advantageous situation because of everything going on. Scheme, speed, the motion, Mike McDaniel, Tua Tungavailoa, Tyreek Hill. That makes it the, the job of the offensive line a hell of a lot easier. Don't forget the running game. Don't disrespect Raheem. Raheem HN when he was there uh, yes. with that crazy stup stupid speed that they have. No, absolutely yes. I, I, it, it, you, don't forget blocking. Don't forget, don't forget Alec Ingold and, and Durham Smite. I call them the janitors because they clean up everything. Er, er, everything that's messed up in the backfield, they clean it up. Right. And there were some blocks missed against the Eagles. And the, as a result, the running game wasn't going anywhere in the first half. So, yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's everything working together. But like I said, and, and again, to go back, depending on where, and again, it's also seven games out of 17. But if we want to play the game of if the season were to end right now, like I said, to me, I would think the AP final vote probably would be Patrick Mahomes won. I'm going to guess probably two would be two because he's a quarterback, even though Tyreek is on the pace for 2,000 yards. Jalen um, Hurts. See, to me, I, I might put Lamar ahead of, of Jalen Hurts. I think, that's that's a good I think Lamar, that's Lamar's good. played some – some I think he's having ball. a very underrated season. Yeah. I look at his statistics. He's right under Tua in, in a lot of important statistics. I was and, like, they're, and they're five and two. As a passer, by the way, not a, not a runner. runner. Correct. As he's not doing a ton of damage as a runner. He's just throwing the ball really, really, really well. If you look at their two losses, it's by what? By three and by, I think, maybe both of them by three. And one of them is because his receivers dropped three touchdown passes. And the other one, they got hosed by a bad call in overtime. And by the way, don't. I apologize for changing the subject, but for Dolphin fans who want to complain about like bad calls they got Sunday night, look at the Hail Mary last night and look at look at the, the Tampa Bay tight end getting tackled by two Buffalo players at the one yard line. And tell me how that's not a DPI where the ball should have been at the one yard line with one on time down where the Bills should have lost a game because for in, in, to a large extent, and I put that on Twitter today. Their coach was extraordinarily conservative by the book in the fourth quarter. And I'm so glad that we don't have to deal with that with Mike McDaniel, where the Bills nursing a 24 lead had a fourth and four, fourth and two, fourth and two, all in the fourth quarter, all inside the Tampa Bay 45 yard line, punted every time. They need to work on the tush push, obviously. Or, I mean, get some, get some testicles. My Lord, go for it. Or Putting get Eric Henry. Oh, I mean, I mean, that's and, and not, no offense. Somebody would have replied to me. It's like that's a smart play. No, there's something to be said for putting your opponent away. Uh, and chances are, fourth and two, you're going to convert it mm -hmm. probably more often than you don't. So again, Mike McDaniel's not like that, and I love that 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 we don't have to deal with that kind of really, really overly conservative coaching. So heading into this game. Um, against the spunky, spirited New England Patriots, which you know are going to be well coached. You know they're going to challenge you in all areas of the team, including special teams. What is your biggest concern about Sunday's 1 p.m. game? Um, I'm concerned that the, the Patriots have found the formula 
like they were they were I've been scolded for, for stealing your turn, but they were booty chicks for most of the season. Two weeks ago against Las Vegas, I think it was two weeks ago, you could make the argument they maybe should have won, but they didn't. And then last week they played a really, really good game where it's kind of typical New England where they play really sound. And if I'm concerned about anything is that they found their game, even though they lost Christian Gonzalez and Matt, Matthew Judon, who were two of the best defensive players. Their offensive line is going to be completely different than what the Dolphins saw in week two and were able to abuse. Um, so I, I think the Dolphins clearly are still a better team. Mm -hmm. But I, I think New England has a potential to make this a competitive game. And there's like some rain in the forecast for at some point during the day on Sunday. Could that cause issues with turnovers? And you throw turnovers into the mix, then – who knows what can happen? All, all that said, I'm confident the Dolphins are going to win because they're clearly a better team. But I don't think it's the gimme that it looked like th two or three weeks ago. Rain makes it steamy, but also makes a slick ball and a slick field. Um, that could benefit the Miami Dolphins in a lot of regards, but then it could also hurt them. And, and really, we all know that Patriots are a very disciplined team. To me, it comes down to executing that first 25 it used to be first 20 and somehow i found out mike mcdaniel does 25 executing that first 25 and getting up early and allowing your defense to pin their ears back and hunt and i gotta admit and i've said this all week on this podcast i really loved what i saw from the eagle from from the dolphins defending the eagles yes i thought that front line played phenomenally. And I know the score was 31 points. I thought they did a great job stopping the run. I thought the linebackers did a phenomenal job making impact plays. And if you could get that type of front seven play, and I've said this all week, if you get that type of front seven play consistently, I don't care who's in the secondary, you'll win 12 games. You get that kind of pressure, J J Jalen Hurts, and Mac Jones have nothing in common. Your defenders were trying to drag Jalen Hurts down, and his 650 pound squatting ability just allowed him to, to drag himself out of those sacks and tackles. Man, if you can hunt Mac Jones like you hunted Jalen Hurts, woo, you're going to no, be defense. And you make a good point because a couple of the big plays that the Eagles were able to, 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 to get done, which were usually in the passing game. If you look at that fourth and one or fourth and three, I think it was where Bradley Chubb flushed out Hurts, and he extended the play and eventually found AJ Brown for what was it 32 or 42 yards, and then there was the other one that was kind of like the the moon ball a little, little bit in the fourth quarter where Cater actually had good position, and eventually looked like he kind of lost the ball or something, and then Brown beat him on that. Um, the two factors here is Jalen Hurts makes a lot of things happen off schedule and not a lot of quarterbacks are like that. And certainly not Mac Jones, like you mentioned. And then they're not a whole lot of wide receivers like AJ Brown. Yeah. So it'll be interesting game. Um, the Dolphins certainly can't start as slow as they did against the Carolina Panthers. I think against a Patriots team, that's going to be the recipe for disaster. And as I always say with the Patriots, I'm extremely curious with what game plan Bill Belichick, the, the mastermind defensive guru, is going to come up with to slow down or contain Miami's offense. Um, last time they played, I thought that three safety uh, defense was a phenomenal idea. I even asked Mike McDaniel this week, why do you think that nobody has tried to replicate that? And, and he gave his very, he gave his very good answer. Um, and, but he, he's going to be prepared for it, but you know, he, he, it, it's, it's something that they can specifically do because they cross train guys so well to play two different positions. Safeties play cornerback, cornerbacks play safety. Some cornerbacks play, some safeties play linebacker. Um, some linebackers play on the defensive line. Some defensive linemen play uh, outside edge positions. So the Patriots, because of how they cross train, um, they're able to sort of morph into different things, which helps them defend Miami. But it'll be interesting to see what happens in this game Sunday. I don't think it's this layup that everybody thinks that it is. I think it's about a 16-foot jumper. Um, you, you, it depends on how good your, your stroke is on, on, on Sunday. Um, obviously, Poupard just 
unleash the fact that weather could be a factor and an element in the game. Um, I can promise you one thing. Dolphins are going to take an L on special teams. However, I, I, however it is, it is. What do you say, Beth? Just, just expect it. Um, but we, we, will, we probably don't need to remind Dolphin fans what happened in week two, right, with special teams? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Here, let's move on, move on, moving yeah. forward. But we will be back tomorrow for our live chat. We're going to actually do it at noon. So hopefully – you can give us an hour of your time before you're watching some college football. Um, on that note, you know where to find us. What, what, what? Just wanted to point out noon Eastern time. Noon Eastern there, time. There are folks watching us who are in yes, California. Are. Absolutely. Even overseas. Um, on that note, you know where we are. We're now on audio. We're not on iTunes as of yet, but hopefully it'll get there by Monday. iTunes is like the club. They don't let everybody in uh, until you get your numbers up. So do me a favor. The subscribe. club can't even handle us right now. Huh? The club can't even handle us right now. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, um, they, They're not letting us in. Um, we got to get our subscriber base up. So please uh, like and subscribe. Um, and... You know where to find us, alldolphins.com. We'll have the update on who's playing, who's not playing up until Sunday's 1 p.m. kickoff. Until tomorrow, we're out. Visit alldolphins.com for the latest news, analysis, and columns, and it's all free. You can find Omar Kelly and Alan Poupard on the All Dolphins podcast discussing South Florida's NFL team on YouTube and anywhere you find your audio podcasts. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share so you stay in the know.